This is the Philosopher Countings Philosophy Minute. Quite a few people say it's all relative, usually as a postmodern response to the Philistines who declare an absolute that they disagree with. It usually shuts down the conversation from either side moving forward and talking about whatever that thing was. What do they really mean, though? Is everything relative? Or is that just something college students say to get better grades? It's a known fact that various cultures do have differing ideas to substantiate concepts. Obesity is beauty in parts of Africa, while the West labels beautiful people as low keto. Depending on who you ask, good parents either spank their children or they never touch them. If you interviewed everyone about the one true religion is, you'd get about 37 possible answers. However, even with varying definitions to ideas, the basis of the ideas do not move. Everyone still feels beauty as a pleasurable aesthetic, no matter whether it's snails or flowers. Goodness transcends whether someone sees it through a hug or a disciplinary swat. Truth always exists, whether we want to believe it or not. We can argue forever about where we get the data and if it's reliable, but for the sake of simplicity, all sane people will agree that there has to be beautiful, good, and true things even if we can't necessarily know them. Whether or how anyone perceives these things is part of a separate discussion altogether. Reality, broadly defined, has two realms, the truth sphere and perception spheres. Truth sphere is where everything really exists, from the laws of physics to the shape of a cat to the size of a hat. The perception sphere is each of our interpretations of those things, which are almost always at least a little inaccurate as we copy the data into our memories. Some folks will try to throw this theory out the window by saying all hard truths are an illusion, but they usually fail to indicate what the illusion is mimicking. The only logical way to believe that is to believe something like Plato's realm of the forms, which is the one true realm with the rest as imperfect copies of it. Most of the heated arguments in this world come from competing perception spheres over the same truth sphere. We all know we're going to die and that this world seems pretty unfair. We also can't really prove exactly where we came from or where we're going. However, it doesn't stop every walk of faith and faithless to assert their perceptions into the realm of truth. A vast majority of the world devotes untold energy trying to convince others of their perception sphere instead of expressing a great story that conforms to the truth sphere to answer some of the most significant life questions we battle with. This leads to several disastrous effects. First, if you're only 99.999% correct and decide to fill in that last 0.001% with faith in yourself, you'll slowly veer ever more off kilter from the truth sphere. Second, the laws of influence require you to at least appear open-minded with others for them to be willing to listen to your viewpoint, which makes you look like a know-it-all if you decide to assert yourself fully. Third, if Murphy's Law is any indication, you likely believe something wrong that'll harm you in the worst possible way. Finally, the habit-forming nature of listening to our perception sphere over the truth sphere when we have to choose one makes shifting into a genuine thirst for the truth progressively more difficult as you become more set in your ways. We must incessantly accept all information as potentially true on merit of fact alone, but we're biologically disposed to prejudice toward what we want to believe. Most of the philosophically untrained don't practice the rigors of logic and reasoning to break free from the chains of closed-mindedness. Take the time to read both sides of the same political story for an example of perception spheres gone wild. The solution to this epidemic is a universal sense of humility. Socrates was quick to point out that he was the least wise, likely because he realized more than most how little he really knew. Every answered question gives at least two more unanswered questions, meaning this mystery of knowing grows more vague with every new discovery. Before we can know more, we must know what we really know. Plenty of humanity's hatred and aggression lives in perception spheres out of comically magnifying the truth sphere facts. So get out there and find the truths behind the stories you hear.